In this video of ADO.NET, we will see how can we establish a connection with the database. As in the previous video, we have already covered the introduction of connected architecture where the first thing is to establish the connection. So here, we will see how can we do that. Basically, first of all, we will have to take all the uh, information of the database like the data source, the server IP address, if it is a remote server or the database in which you want to make the connection, the username, password, which are going to get connected. So we will have to store all these informations in a string which we will call the connection string and using that connection string you can actually establish a connection. So let's see practically how can we uh, make a connection with the SQL database. Now let's get started with the connected architecture implementation. So uh, here as you can see it's a very simple form. Here I have taken a button on which when I click the connection will be established but before getting started with the code make sure you have included the system.data.sql client as here I'm gonna work with the SQL server so SQL client will be the required namespace for me I have also taken system.configuration right here which I will use later in this implementation now from this system.data.sql client you will get a class called SQL connection which will ensure like it will be able to make a connection with the SQL server installed in your local or in remote machine. So uh, what I'll have to do in the constructor as you can see I just initialize this particular object so that we would get to know like which database we need to, con we, we need to connect in order to make the DQL or DML operation. So here as you can see it's initialized with a new connection and here it's something in a string and what we call is a connection string because this is a string which will be having all the information in order to make a successful connection. So uh, let's get started with this. First of all you'll have to tell the server. Uh, when I say first of all it doesn't mean like you have to write it in a particular sequence but just for the understanding. Uh, here is the server location. If it is a remote server you will have to pass the IP address of that particular uh, server along with the port number on which your SQL server is running. After that uh, you can continue with the other things but here for my machine since uh, the application and the database both are here in the uh, same machine only so I just passed a dot or you can also pass your system name like for me it's another PC or anything alright so you can simply pass like your machine name I can also pass dot if you are working in a same machine as where the database is existing now for a better understanding you can also come to your SQL Server Management Studio which it will be showing right here so as here you see here's the server name alright so you can also use this server name right here rather than passing the dot so you can check what is written here with this in the server name accordingly you can plan if I will write a dot here even though I'll be able to connect to my server that means dot is going to work same for me now uh, next is initial catalog like once uh, you connect you need to specify like which particular database you are gonna work so as here you may have number of databases even if you don't have you'll have to specify that and here in the initial catalog I specified like my DB is my target database on which I want to do some operations all right now next is user ID and password as here while working with this uh, connection thing when you will get connected there will be a couple of options for the authentication like whether you want to get go for the Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication. So for the SQL Server authentication you need to pass the username and password alright and username is SA when you start working with this when you install the SQL Server you need to pass the password at that time. So that is what I have done here user ID is SA and password is SQL for me. Uh, so that means like I am connected with the SQL Server authentication but if I want to go for the Windows authentication what I need to do because in Windows authentication I don't need to pass any username or password 
so in that particular case what I can do is I can simply remove these things and I can simply pass like integrated security is equal to either true or SSPI so these will be working for you if you want to connect as a Windows authentication but it will not be successful to get connected in Windows authentication when the server is in a remote location so uh, it is a good practice to get connected with the SQL server authentication which I have already done and now once you have specified all these things you can use this connection object con whenever you want to establish a connection so here uh, you can see like here in a button click what I'm doing is inside this try catch because uh, there may be some if the server is not running right now or something like that so it may cause an exception at runtime so that's why I'm, I've written this uh, in a try catch block and as soon as you will click here uh, it will be like a method here open is a method con dot open means the connection would be established and later whenever you want to do any DML operation you can do that inside this after this connection open and means before closing it and after opening it you can do whatever DML or DQL you want to perform and later at the end it's a good practice to close that connection so let's execute it and see whether we are getting the correct output or not so I'll click here and see connection open alright and as soon as you will say okay the connection would be closed so means everything is running fine but in case if there is any exception if there is any uh, thing which is not correct with this connection string let's say I misspelled your database name or anything like a server name or username password anything so if there is anything wrong there must be an exception but you may get a different exception message like for example right now my database name is incorrect so when I click this button it's saying cannot open database MDB requested by the login the login field for this user because it is, is saying about this uh, server name if, if, for the database name if you will misspell your server name again there will be an exception but with a different message like here a network related inst something a network related or instance specific error occurred while establishing a connection to SQL server now the error message is quite different because it's expecting like there may be a network issue that's why it's unable to access this particular database but uh, obviously it was not a correct name and similarly you will get a different message when you will say something wrong in the username or password now when you're working in a ADU.NET application or in any web or windows application you may have a multiple forms where you require to pass the connection because maybe multiple forms would be getting or submitting some data in the database for the different tables so it is actually not a good practice to pass the connection string right here means this is not the correct uh, place to pass the connection string so what I'll do is I'll simply cut it from here and now what I'll do is I will add a new object right here I new element right here and that is going to be the application configuration file that is app.config you may have it already so be sure like whether it is there or not now inside this connection app.config it's a simple XML based file so you can what you can do is you can just add a tag here inside the configuration named connection strings alright and inside this you can simply add one connection string and you can paste what you have written there you may have a number of connection string in the same application maybe you are working with multiple databases at the same time so uh, it's a good idea to pass the name as well along with this so I will say con str means connection string that's the name of my connection string and now I can use this connection string name whenever I want to pass the connection alright so now what I'll do here uh, rather than passing the connection what I'll say here is configuration manager dot connection strings alright so here I'll have to pass the name of my connection string that is con str and now later you can con you want to con you have to convert it in the string so for that you can call to string or we do have a property here called connection string 
both will convert this particular data in the string format. So, uh, a configuration manager will be getting from the system for configuration, which I already included earlier. So, you can find that particular configuration manager class inside this namespace. And let's re execute this. It should work now. So, it's saying connection open means everything is running good. So, this is how you can start establishing your connection. And now, once you have established the connection, we can execute any SQL command for the database, which we will cover in our next chapter.